Stan to my quarries, and welcome back to another episode of Rogue Tech as we get into the campaigns of Howl's Harrows. And the last time we left the Harrows on a little bit of a knife edge. You see, the Harrows currently have about 200,000 in the bank to run a company that costs about 950,000. And did I mention it's the last day of the month before bills arrive? So we need to make about a million C bills in the space of, well, this mission. And it just so happens that Cease and Desist is going to pay out just enough. Anyway, we have reliable information that a local lo government labo laboratory is attempting to reverse engineer sensitive Davian technology in violation of a usage license. They have failed to respond to our case and our cease and desist letter, and delivery of which has been certified by Comstar themselves. Therefore, we authorize you to execute the license termination clause upon that facility. Again, this will be one million. 1,000 sea bills, zero of one priority salvage, two skull difficulty. We are generating one and a half shields because we don't have the Shadow Hawk or the Shade Hawk. So things ought to be somewhat interesting. Okay, dropping down and please. Oh god, no, please okay, don't be no. stuck. Please, game, don't don't have me stuck on top of a mountain. We're about to find out if I'm going to have to basically reset this recording or not because if I can't get everybody down, then. That's just gonna be okay. Burn a boy. Do you have jump jets? I forget. Let's find out. We'll be l discovering this very soon. So unfortunately, we have spawned on top of the mountain, which we're not supposed to do, and we must now bounce our way down. And if the burn a boy can't get down, then I'm basically resetting and starting all over from scratch because I'm not putting up with that at the moment. Uh, however, we have basically a little bit of a short group at the moment, and the reason why I'm not going through all the introductions, I just want to make sure that the burn a boy can actually get down. He can. Okay, lovely. All right, so we have a little bit of a different group than normal. Since the Shadowhawk and the Shadehawk are both currently in for major repairs, we have had to bring once again the Irby Lance. And so the Irby Lance it consists of Vatanbo with the Death Crusade, basically a discount generator. Then we have Finn in the Kitsutsuki, because the Kitsutsuki has a rotor AC 2 and has proven to be absolutely hilarious. Mockingbird once again reprises her role as the pilot of the Hachi, as well as Coach, who is back in the Javelin. Okay, so it's not quite the full Irby Lance. Because the uh, the Usagi, unfortunately, has a little bit of a malfunction on its light PPC and we couldn't bring it. But close enough. Howl is driving the Gladiator, which has proven to be, well, insanely good throughout most of the things that we've done. Paradox in the Wolverine, which is modestly good. Jester, of course, in the Burna Boy, which has proven to be hilarious on base assault missions such as this one. And Paladin in the Hammer, which has had a little bit of a difficult time actually getting into combat recently because of where it spawns. But today should hopefully be a good day. So let's rush on forward, make sure we can get everybody quickly into the zone. We're going to have to bounce on down with the Burna Boy because we gave it all the jump jets in the universe so that it basically could be incredibly aggressive and that has worked out quite well quite nicely for us uh the wolverine also not stuck lovely just gotta double check and make sure uh it's a bit of a bug apparently there apparently is some sort of mask that they have laid on top of the map that has caged i suppose fenced in certain spawn zones in order to make it so you supposedly can't spawn in a location where you can't get down from unfortunately there's a bit of a bug in the current version of the game where sometimes that doesn't work and you end up with mechs that are kind of stuck luckily for us hammer will not be stuck on this one will eventually be able to make its way down which is good the hammer is a fairly solid fire support mech that we would like to keep you know active and capable uh, the Hachi, unfortunately, is going to take probably a little while longer before it can actually get in the range of anything. Okay, so let's uh, rush on in here and see if we can't take a look at everything. I'm a little bit surprised we don't see all that much, although we have a Bulldog medium tank as well as a Yellow Jack, which must die immediately, and a Gemji, which we must avoid being anywhere near at all costs. The Gemji is a melee crab. It is equipped with all kinds of crazy close-range weapons, so we don't want to fight it at close range. Luckily, we have several mechs that are perfectly well designed to be able to do just that. Well, fight at long range, that is. And if he does get close, well, we have the burn boy, don't we? Uh, we're going to slip on over here, see if we can't wipe out the yellow jacket soon. He didn't move all that much. I'm going to fire the rockets and we'll open fire with everything. Everything we've got, make sure that we can shoot it down. It does look like they've got some sort of AMS, which is going to be unfortunate. I've got two mechs that kind of rely on AMS. And if I can't get through, then we're going to have some difficulties. Luckily for us, though, the Wolverine is fairly well designed to try and shoot down helicopters because of its Ultra AC-5. And double tap. And it's out of the sky. So don't have to worry about the yellow jacket. Yellow jackets tend to come with a lot of really irritating and dangerous weapons. They're fairly solid VTOLs. It was this heavy turret. Looks like artillery. That could be a problem. Uh, dual mortar, also artillery. Wolverine getting shot at by a large pulse laser. Luckily for us, no connections on them. 
which is also really like considering how little evasion he actually has so we're kind of relying on the range on that one how let's get your gladiator rocking and rolling as soon as we can now there is no point in attempting to penetrate the ams field on for the uh turrets because the turret ams doesn't care about heat so we're basically, oh, luckily, looks like we're just going to be able to blitz our way through anyway. That's lovely. Okay. Uh, the Kitsutsuki, we can rush on in. I'm going to see if I can't just rotary auto cannon this thing at five. Lots of blasts all over the place. Only got a couple of hits on that one, which is a little bit unfortunate. Please tell me you didn't jam the gun. And the gun is jammed. Okay, we were a bit, a bit aggressive on it. I got a little bit lucky the last time we used it, and so I was hoping to replicate that luck once more. Uh, we do, of course, have our normal LRMs. We also have SAM LRMs. And then if we swap over, we have Inferno SRMs for all the best fun that you could ever ask for. I don't feel like cooking the mech all that much, but then again, it's not that much cooking. We could just shut off the medium lasers should need be. Did get a good hit on that, and then a whole bunch of crits on that. Apparently, the turret cooling system has been damaged, which is lovely, but I would like to have it dead before the turrets could actually do anything. I think the Burna Boy might actually be able to get in range of that. Oh, I think for sure the Burner Boy is going to be able to get in range of somebody. So I'm going to rush him off over here, see if we can't... Uh, ooh, that's not super good. But I have a lot of good chances. I mean, look at all that damage. Oh, the Burner Boy is so good. For trying to just burn out a turret, it is possibly the greatest design we have ever constructed. Oh god, is anybody going to move after you? 17? No, that turret's actually going to be intact. Um, that is unfortunate. Oh, we can just barely get the range from over here. So we're going to rush the Hachi on over here, and we're going to hope that we can get these Artemis AMS through. It didn't break it. That's unfortunate. I thought about switching oh, to dead fires. I didn't think I'd have the range for it. Okay, so the turret is mostly dead, but as we all know, mostly dead is slightly alive, and his turret weapons are actually still fully intact. Ranger shifting over to the side, and... PPCs. However, the PPCs have missed and hit the building, which is excellent for us. What we can do with the Burner Boy is just jump into the middle of this and just start lighting everything on fire. I mean, it's already demonstrated with just a couple of near misses, it can torch out a turret with no problem at all. So it'll be able to take out this turret in, without too much trouble either, I assume. Uh, large laser fire coming over towards the Wolverine, and no actual hits so far, so that's feeling pretty good. And it's just apparently is a pair of probably heavy rifles at best, so that's a fairly pathetic turret. Uh, that turret is a little bit more powerful. That seemed to be normal actual ultra auto cannons of some description. And then all of the mortars. Luckily for us, the mortars all hit the buildings. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and there goes a massive chunk. <laughs> Please tell me that's gonna hit and like break some buildings or something. I I'm literally gonna track this thing as it trips on top of the mountain. No, be careful, Jeff. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that did he just open up? I think he opened up a hole in the wall by doing that. That was a terrible round of shooting for him. Okay, let's keep some pressure on. Oh, without getting too close to the Gemji, of course, because the Gemji is incredibly dangerous. If we shot from here, the accuracy would be pretty gosh darn terrible. Uh, if I tried to get in closer, I'd be too close to the Gemji and I'd probably get myself killed. <laughs> yeah, I can basically get right next to the Gemji. That would be a really bad idea uh, because the Gemji would kill us. Like, flat out, the Gemji would absolutely murder us. I think I kind of want to just hold Coach in reserve, but I'm going to shift over. We're going to ignore that tank for a little bit. We'll have Coach go after a turret. Uh, a whole bunch of firing. Hopefully he will burn through this thing so I don't have to worry. It's still not dead. Are you kidding? Unfortunately, he's not. The dual gun is still intact. It's going to have to require us to get it down to all of the structure completely gone off of it, which was a little disappointing. I was hoping for some crits, which would blow it up. It does have ammunition on board. At least one would hope. However, there are two other turrets. We are going to wipe out every single turret for the additional price bonus. If we came in here and just burned everything to the ground, which, you know, we can do. Oh, Gemji's coming in. Good. So Gemji actually moved in a fairly nice position for us. Oh, I didn't realize you could just get over there. Yeah, finish it off with the Hachi. Uh, but the Gemji is going to be the focus of just everything else that I can send as well. Eight of the twelve were knocked down, but it looks like we had just enough in order to take care of the problem. The Wolverine can start moving to engage that Gemji as soon as I get a line of sight on it. Or maybe not. Maybe we'll come in from down here and we'll just start tapping people in the back. And some seriously good hits, actually. We managed to get some penetrating hits on the Ultra Auto Cannon, despite the low chance to actually hit, so not bad at all. Okay, Hull, I think we're going to want to duel with this guy a little bit. Oh, that's a direct movement line. I'm not certain I'm super happy about that. But we're going to have to start swinging in to start putting some pain on the Gemji, and the tag is part of that. Good, the tag did actually manage to hit, which is going to target acquire. It'll make everybody else's life so much easier. And we're going to take advantage of that by getting up close and personal within visual range with all the weapons we have at our disposal and fire away. 
So twin PPCs and managed to break open most of his leg. It's not broken yet, but he has also lost all of his evasion at this point. Now I probably can bring Jester in, and I may have well Finn's available, but the Kitsutsuki doesn't have any guns at the moment, so it might be a good idea. Ugh, I can't quite make it. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to sort of run around the horn on this one. And he did actually open up the lane here, which is really unfortunate for them, because now I can hide from whatever PPC carrier is up over there. We're just going to get inside the base with the burner boy, and not you, but you, the the dual mortars, and I'm going to light you on all the fire. And I think this should take you out. Oh yes, the turret is completely gone. So we have taken out two of the turrets so far. There should be two more. Uh, one was a auto cannon turret. Oh no, it's just a rifle position. Really? Oh, I thought it was more than that. Uh, so the hammer is in a fairly good position to hopefully follow up. Come on, give me a line of sight. Give me any line of sight that you can manage. Really? We're going to be able to get anything except a line of sight. How is this possible? Okay, so that's incredibly disappointing because my plan had been to just blitz him with all of my SRMs. Although one of my MMLs is currently jammed, so it wouldn't be as powerful as we'd like. Uh, I will fire onto it, however, as soon as it comes back to the Gamgee. Yeah, uh, just to give it a little bit of love. Maybe we'll get lucky and we'll break something. No, not going to happen. He is going to be in melee range, though, so that is going to be very unfortunate. The Kitsutsuki not going to be able to assist in the follow-up at the moment because the gun is currently a little bit busted. Uh, so we're going to keep it a little bit in back. Slightly over to the side, and just brace. And hopefully we will get that gun unjammed. No, it did not get unjammed, but it will be soon. At least that's the plan. I hope that by the time we actually engage you, we've got basically the entire thing taken care of and everybody torched out and destroyed so we can fight you at our leisure. Although this bottom lance here isn't all that bad, so I'm really not feeling too terrible about that. Uh, Bulldog going to shift on close, going to start to open fire on the Gladiator, getting a couple of hits, especially with the machine guns. So that's a little bit painful, but nothing too serious. But I'm really worried about what the Gemji is about to do to me, except apparently the Gemji is not moving so early. Huh. I thought the Gemji was ready, but apparently not. I saw a side line of sight. That's what I want, because we want to continue to focus damage on this leg. Uh, if I can break this leg before he can move, that'll ensure that I... Uh, 79? How much health is left in that leg? I would bet... Oh, 13, yeah. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna precision strike. Got it, okay. So, that was the reason why we got, we almost never use these abilities. And people have asked me, why don't you ever use your call shot or your vigilance? In general, I much prefer to be able to stack up to get to the inspiration bonus that we, we can use. Because that's like a plus 5% uh, increase in accuracy for everybody. And that's pretty gosh darn powerful. Um, once you stop to think about it, it's like, wow, powerful. And so I kind of prefer to go in that direction than uh, try and make it work with uh, using the special abilities. Also, Kalchak gives you this massive malice to accuracy, which is really kind of terrible <laughs> to have to deal with. Uh, give me a shot on this. So I'm burning this out to make sure that I can use the Hachi's uh, SRMs effectively. I just wanted to make sure that this wouldn't get in the way, which it had been in the past. So now that we've taken care of that, we can actually move in fairly efficiently. Although one, two, three, four. Yeah, we got all four. Uh, so that's why we reserve the Hachi so we could. But as I was saying, uh, the offensive push, it gives you a massive reduction to accuracy in order to get an increase in chance to hit a location. And it's just a chance to get that location, so it's not exactly great. But there are certain circumstances like that where we only needed one good hit and we had four chances of getting a 50%. So it worked out okay. Um, however, it's not something I prefer to do. I, would, I don't need to save you. Why am I bothering? Because I'm getting one random part. There's no point. That was dumb of me. Although if his leg is super vulnerable, I will just start focusing all the fire to see if I can blow it up. But yeah, so because of that, I almost never use it. And Vigilance is good. I mean, Vigilance gives you guarded and entrenched and strips away all of your uh, all of your problems with stability. Even if you're standing out in the open, which is a great defensive maneuver. But I'd prefer to be a little bit more aggressive and on the attack. Okay, you've got like 70 health and I got a 52%. I'm going to see if I can't force my way through that leg. And that is our oh, engine destroyed. Yeah, engine destroyed. Okay, so we've taken out the Gamgee. That was the biggest threat so far. Everything else, unless it's coming down the mountain, is not all that dangerous. So that we've seen, and we're going to just continue the pressure. I'm gonna start maneuvering the Kitsuki around. It, there's nothing you can do until that gun gets unjammed. All right, we'll be a little bit more light with it instead of trying to rack rack five on it. It can actually go up to six if we need it to, but. And it's not really a functionality that we use all that often. Uh, I will actually jump in order to get back into this fight because this mech is kind of not there. And yeah, it's terrible accuracy, but who cares? Fire. 
Oh, you've managed to get a couple of penetrating hits anyway. Track repulsion crits are not terrible, so that'll slow down the bulldog a little bit. And if I can get Paladin in, uh, the hammer should be in a fairly solid position to totally wipe him out. Uh, we'll just maneuver slightly to the side. We'll be in nice and close. Now, the accuracy is, of course, terrible. I have Inferno SRMs. I'm going to use them just, just in case. We'll fire everything. We don't have many Inferno SRMs. That's the thing to keep in mind, though. But we have some. And they're really good at smashing down buildings and, you know, taking care of mechs. So, MML unjammed, so it's back up to its full salvo that it can pull off. And I'll sprint on over here. That'll give us a shot over on the uh, the fairly vulnerable and weak bulldog. So we'll go right into the brow and break that in half. Okay. Uh, there is only the Ranger left. The Rangers are fairly fast, lighter vehicles with uh, LRMs, I believe, or SRMs. Uh... Ranger W1 or V1 or double V1? I think it's a W, but it's not really sure. He seems to be running, which, you know, probably the smartest course of action for him. I could run in with a burner boy to see if I can't, you know, burn him out, but that may not be required. We are, of course, going to hang around to kill absolutely everything uh, for obvious reasons. So I'm actually going to come after you with the javelin. And the burner boy is probably going to just hang out inside and, well, burn everything. Although he could miss every single shot, although it has been tagged now, so that should make our lives just a little bit easier. Uh, the Tombow and the Javelin, very similar in terms of what they've been designed to do. So I'm going to shift over here. I'm not in a position to actually do anything, but I can blast at this, and if I hit it all times, it still won't break it. But we missed one of the medium lasers, so it's getting close there, sort of. We'll take care of it shortly. So the enemy off the distance, still doing whatever it is they're doing, but we, we will be able to crack them quite solidly in half. Oh, we have a... Oh, okay, there it is. So the side shot, it is at extreme range, but that's exactly what our Ultra Auto Cannon is designed to do. Unfortunately, the accuracy is still not going to be all that good. Bull fire. Oh, wait a second, you had a whole ton of ballistics. Was that all machine guns? Wow, that's a lot of incendiary machine guns. Holy crap. Okay, uh, so if I can get the Hachi in a range to see if she can't uh, finish things off. It's still not great accuracy. It is very maneuverable and off in the distance. However, we did get quite a few shots on it on that left side. I may just... I'm going to see if I can't get everybody else to do stuff first. And if I have to, then I'll invest in it. Uh, I will set up to... Not Infernos, but LRMs. The accuracy is terrible either way. On to normal modes and make sure they're not hot loaded. Yeah, they're in normal mode. And we'll just fire everything. Missed pretty badly all around. To get a couple of hits with the missiles. Nothing too special or serious so far. Can I run out? I mean, I can jump out to take care of it, and I'm probably going to do that. <sighs> do I care that much? How damaged are you? We don't know. Well, we know that you're below half armor. We can take care of the base at any time. It's going to take us a little while to take care of all of this. This does increase our heat quite significantly. However, that takes care of the initial base garrison. There is a supporting lance way up on that mountain still over here. Uh, however, I'm not all that worried about it anymore. Uh, so the gladiator will sort of continue the step around. We will not fire the MMLs just in order to make sure that we keep them not being jammed. And a pair of snub nose PPCs managing to knock out the first of the buildings. So we are already on the way. We've taken minimal damage, which was really the hope that I had here. Because if we take too much damage, then obviously problems will ensue. I'm going to start running the Kitsuki around the side. Uh, because it's got a long range fire support weapon. Once I get eyes on a target, then he can just start rapid firing into it. It's going to be beautiful. But it may not be worth going after them. I mean, they're way far off. But it's worth extra points. It's like worth 10% contract score, which is like 100,000. That would cover our repair costs. And so that's kind of important to me. Uh, I will rush the javelin on in, see if it can't get a line of sight on anything, because it does have a whole bunch of ad additional sensor systems. We have located a Panther C, an ER PPC, which is quite dangerous, as well as an SRM-4, which is not all that dangerous. So it's basically the souped-up version of the normal mech. I doubt the Tombow can get the range either, but we're going to rush him anyway, even over the rough terrain. That'll be fine. The Burner Boy could get up there and do a lot of damage in fairly short order. Uh, I don't have a line of sight on him just yet, but that's okay. And we will just stop. He's got one pip of stability at the moment. I'm not all that concerned. So far, the only thing we've identified is a mech that can do a decent amount of stability damage. But nothing too terrifying. Uh, I could jump. I'm going to sprint. Instead, we're just going to continue to flood onto them. Then we'll come back and we'll wipe out the entirety of the base. Unless I send Burner Boy back for it. I could. I mean, I could probably flatten like two or three buildings in one go. Which, you know, would be really fun to do. Continue to rush on forward with the Gladiator. Not the fastest mech. I kind of wish I could get a mask into it or a faster engine. But it'll do for what it does right now. Uh, Finn, can you get a line of sight? No lines of sight just yet, but he'll continue to move around to the side, and eventually we will get a target on him, and I will open fire with all the rotaries that I have at my disposal. Uh, in the meantime, I really should, you know, chill out, but I kind of want to bounce back into the base. So we're going to hop back into the base, and we're going to see if we can't light a whole bunch of things on fire. 
Hi, boys. Uh, let's see, multi-target. I only have a target on two, so... Oh, not you. Multi-target. So, you and you. And I will shut off my... Flamer here, flamer there, and that'll set one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, and we'll see if we can't just flatten the entirety of the base. So that's the one, and <laughs> I think yeah, each one was doing a hundred and thirty damage. That's just amazing. <laughs> I am so happy we built this mech. It's gonna make missions like these so easy. I love it. Okay, I don't have a direct line of sight on him, but I do have an obstructed... I'm not going to shoot that. A 4.3% on weapons that can jam is not something I'm really with, because eventually I am going to get him range in the Inferno missiles, and he's going to feel all the pain I've got. Mockingbird probably won't get a line of sight, although if she does, ooh, it's going to be sort of at a range. I saw it. You can't hide... There it is. So we'll see what we can get from here. 26%. I'm going to shoot anyway. Uh, what... This will allow us to identify if he's got any sort of AMS defenses, which it doesn't appear he does. Also kind of looks like he's all in his lonesome, which is a bit odd, because I haven't seen anything else. Although they might be stuck, which we have noticed is a little bit of a problem, because the one stuck, unstuck map clearly didn't load on this one. I'm going to shift around to his right side, our left, and we have identified the rest of the lance, which is stuck. Uh, it's a mongoose, as well as a wasp. Both are rather pathetic mechs. Uh, the mongoose is a loot pinata, but the wasp is something basically normal. I'm going to blast into his side, see if I can't tear off that PPC before we can use it. Uh, we have managed to break through his armor, and we've destroyed a heat sink, which is luckily. Uh, Jester can just basically finish off the base. What he's going to do is he's going to just, quite simply, turn around. And then... This has 150 health, this has 100 health, so he needs one and two, so what I'll do is one and two, and this is off, 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 this is off. This is me being a little bit conservative, but I also kind of want to chill the mech out a little bit. That'll take out the one, and just for completeness sake, that should take out the other. Okay, so we basically burned this thing to the ground. Congratulations, we have successfully done it. Oh, apparently that's it. Um, we didn't need to kill the second lance, which, um, okay. I was kind of planning on killing that second lance, but I suppose not. So that's a little disappointing, not gonna lie. Uh, I was kind of hoping to kill that extra lance for the additional cash, but I suppose needs must. We did get a 35% bonus, which got us up to 1.277 million sea bills. That will keep us nice and comfortable. Very few... <laughs> Very little damage. Most of our mechs didn't take any. You took one point, a couple points of damage, the Javelin took a couple more, and maybe the Hachi did? But yeah, overall, we took very little damage on this mission, which means it'll be a very rapid turnaround. And we got a melee fire control system, which is kind of useful. Uh, we also got four parts of the Gemji, but who cares about that, because we don't really need it. I mean, I'd love to have a melee mech, but I'm not really willing to, you know, kill myself in order to get one. Also, we needed the money. We desperately needed the money. If we didn't get the money on this mission, we would have failed. Like, flat out, hands down, the company was about to die. Because we had 200000 and we needed to make 950000 in the space of five minutes. And, well, we did. We made 1.2 million bills, so that'll help out a lot. That'll get us back in the green, or the black, or however you want to describe it in accounting sheets. And have a little bit left over for a couple of repairs. Although, we are going to take another couple of missions... There was another mission that I was eyeing up. I thought it would get, happen next time, but we finished that base assault surprisingly quickly. And so we'll have a little bit more time today. Tortuga taking Tamarins from Steiner. Excellent job. 4,000 for one day. 4,397. Let's see how long that actually is, like, taking. Uh, yeah, that'll they'll be done in one day, and we are not stopping work on the Shadehawk, which is great. The Shadehawk should be ready to go sometime soon. So since all of our pilots are currently asleep and... Well, we need a little bit of repairs. We will chill and hit the end of the month down to 611,000. So that mission really saved our bacon on that one. Got us right up on high back over where we needed to be. I'm just going to wait for our pilots to be mostly ready. Shade Hawk is ready to go and just get to double check. It didn't actually take any major damage aside from armor, which appears... To oh yeah, we also got to get the Usagi all patched up. The PPC on it has been dented once again. At some point, I do need to rebuild this mech, but I kind of want to rebuild it and keep all the lamb stuff on it. But if I do that, it doesn't have any room for weapons. <laughs> oh, that is a major concern of mine. So it'll take us a single day and another 1,200 in order to fix that, which will be perfect because that'll allow us to have finished the Shadowhawk, which... Well, the Shadowhawk's not done. The Shadowhawk, however, is in many pieces, I believe. Right? That's where I left it? Oh, yeah. The Shadowhawk took one heck of a pounding in the last battle, 
and it has lost its small X-Pulse laser as well as the gigantic MML-15 risk, which was amazing. Luckily for us, we managed to save the double heatsink kit as well as the fusion core and the engine itself. So that's going to be somewhat helpful. It's going to take us a single day to get that all patched up, but we've got 1.7 tons remaining because we need to put Endo and Pharaoh back on it because somehow its structure got blown up on the arms. I think acid, there's something wrong with it. But the Shadowhawk is in desperate need of a rebuild in some way or another. I'm not quite happy with the current style of it, and I will be looking into what I can do with it in the future now that we've kind of moved on. We're no longer quite so far against the wall, and now the Shadowhawk's in for repairs, we may as well do some actual modifications to it. However, since we only spent about 25 minutes on that mission, which is great, uh, I'm just going to do a quick check to see if our pilots are ready to go. Hey, Death Crusade has leveled up. I can pick up Death Crusade's recoil penalty. That would allow him to start driving the uh, the Kitsutsuki a little bit more. A maximum evasion would be helpful. Uh, 10 overheat, not so much. And the call shot bonus is amazing, but I am, I think I want to get multiple pilots who are capable of using the Kitsutsuki just because the Brack 2 is a lot of fun to use, and so I'm going to level him up in that way. Uh, Jesser, able to get up to level 2, or a level seven on this which would give him 10 percent increase in range which would be absolutely lovely uh come over here for the additional health or a whole ton of indirect fire penalties i'm gonna be honest he's not using most of these abilities uh, a range increase on his flamers would be helpful won't allow him to engage vtols but he's right up against warlord which would be really lovely to get my convert's fine paladin is fine paradox is fine and showboat is fine but then again we don't bring showboat on very many missions she's brand new to the company hi welcome showboat but we need to, you know, train her up. However, there was a mission that I wanted to take. It's another test drive. So, yeah, it's another Night Star. I love Night Stars. Night Stars are just so cool. And we're going to take it against the Federated Suns. A two and a half scale mission, 470. This is going to be great. At least I hope it's going to be great. We're locked in on the Night Star, which, of course, Howell's going to drive. <laughs> because Howell likes the Night Star almost as much as I do. Uh, we then need to put the Shadehawk in. It'll be the leader of our little side lance. Then we'll also bring the hammer. Yes, I know. We all want to bring the awesomeness that could be an entire Irby Lance. But it's a two and a half skull mission. I just want to make sure that we're being a little bit safe. Uh, the Usagi, I don't think I want to bring. I do want to bring the Hachi, though, because the missile firepower is quite considerable, unless they've got AMS, in which case, suddenly our life becomes much more difficult than it needs to be. And we'll go grab the. Ooh, tempting to bring both of these because they're really good. Uh, the firepower on the Javelin is a whole bunch of medium lasers, but the firepower on the Kitsuki could be really dangerous if he starts getting good hits. This is more reliable. This happens at range. I think we're going to bring the Kitsuki on this one just for the advantages so mockingbird is going to go six 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 seven i think i have to put her in the shade hawk just for the accuracy it's kind of too important not to have burner boy also has a super high accuracy which you know may not need but i'm gonna leave it anyway uh finn can drive the kitsutsuki just in order to keep that weapons going a uh, death crusade can get inside the hachi although yeah they're both five guts so it doesn't really matter and then coach can drive the hammer which feels a little bit off and awkward, but I'm gonna roll that way just so I can get some fun stuff. And again, we need to build, we need to basically rebuild the Shadowhawk, which we will do shortly, but right now we're gonna drop back in on somebody. It's in a tundra biome, which is excellent. It means we get to cook everything, although it also makes it a lot harder on the Burner Boy to actually, you know, annihilate the enemy with all the flamers. That's actually been a little bit of a drawback. However, we have noticed that he's still able to shove people way over the heat line if he gets reasonably good accuracy, which he had a habit of doing. Now, his elite flamers, or his advanced ones, the flamer pluses, which don't have names, uh, those actually have increased accuracy and ignoring evasion. However, they generate less heat and damage, so eh, not so great. They do deal additional damage on overheat, though, which can sort of even that out, but if you're trying to just cook somebody the standard flamers are actually working a little bit better i want to get my hands on some more you know burning weaponry just in order to really start taking off with that one but yeah so far the flamers have not disappointed me at all i'm incredibly happy with their current performance and i can't wait to play with them more once we get that all taken care of oh life will be good although i'm not sure if i can add even more flamers onto the build like i think i don't have a kit for it but i'd like to <laughs> Oh, it's so much fun. The other idea is, and we don't have these yet, but they exist in universe. They're called plasma rifles. And basically, they're flamers except at longer ranges and deal like 45 hit, heat per hit. Uh, these were like the meta back in a previous version, and they tried to nerf them into the ground. I don't know if they have. Uh, they have nerfed flamers to a certain extent by making it so that everybody's got an absolutely absurdly high heat gauge so that they could, you know, include all the other heat effects and the shutdown effects and everything, which is really cool, but it also made flamers a lot weaker than they otherwise used to be. Also kind of messed with the UI a little bit, but that's fine. The UI can bend and break to the will of the rogue deck people. It'll be okay. Alrighty, so, test drive. 
We've captured the latest pride and joy of Comstar, Nightstar NSR 9 Jing. Our scientists have been reverse engineering the monster, but now they say they need real battle data before they can continue. We'd like you to provide that data, and we've located a Davian Lance to use as guinea pigs. Take the NSR 9J down to the planet and eliminate the Lance. Needless to say, we don't have another of these, so it's imperative that you return it intact. This will pay out 534,000 sea bills anyway. It's not a million, but hey, that's certainly a lot. And a max soldier of 4 of 17, but two and a half skulls. But we did bring an assault mech. So, kind of balances out, I hope. And we're not too far away. Oh, yeah, I forgot. None of the second lances spawned. I forgot how test drive works. I'm sorry. So we're not getting any of the backup lens. Uh, we have the Gladiator, the Wolverine, and the Burner Boy. I'm, I'm not broken up about the Burner Boy being in the initial lance, but I am kind of missing the second lance because, you know, the Shadehawk has a lot of penetrative firepower that I kind of wanted. All right, let's get... Uh, Actually, you know, let's get pa yeah, let's get Paradox running forward so we can get an idea of where the enemy is, because we're relatively close. Apparently, not close enough. So we'll have Jester rush on in there with his maximum speed. Is quite the quick mech. Still not identifying everything. That's okay. Oh yeah, first round sensors are off, so nobody actually gets to see anything until they come into range. And the Gladiator should be an interesting addition. A lot of firepower as long as they don't got AMS. Even if they do have AMS, his twin snub nose BPCs is pretty brutal. I mean, it's not you know twin uh, Gauss rifles, but it's pretty gosh darn close. Uh, the twin gas rifles deal 75 damage a hit. The twin PPCs deal 60 damage. And it's a stinger. Okay, nobody cares about a stinger. We will kill the stinger without too much effort. It's a stinger. Also, he managed to build up no heat at all. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Howl moving on 12, though, because of the speed of the assault mech. Oh, show me that night star. Show me that night star. Oh. Or, you know, you can get shot up by a bushwhacker. Oh, easy salvage. Here's the fun thing about bushwhackers. They're equipped with excellent engines. We're gonna get four parts to a bushwhacker today. <laughs> uh, we make we make every stuff, but I love night stars. Night stars are so cool. All right, so now that I've uh, geeked out a little bit about night stars, I want a direct line of sight. Can I get one? Uh, not quite, but that'll be good enough. Show me what we've got. Not great, even worse. Um, I may as well fire. I mean, do the gas rifles produce recoil? I forget. I don't think they do. And you know, the air PPC certainly doesn't fire. So he got missed by negative one and three percent. So I'm not quite sure how he's ignored being shot at so far, but hey, we're just gonna work with it. But yeah, bushwhackers, easy targets. Uh, you basically go for them because XL engine and a goblin. So a whole bunch more missiles than I thought I was gonna take from a goblin, but that'll be fine. I was, ex <clears throat> pardon me, something caught in my throat. Uh, I was expecting lasers from a goblin, but we can work with that. And a scout hover tank, <laughs> you're adorable. Also a whole bunch of missiles. I really wish I had an AMS to actually work with. That would help out considerably. And they really focused down on the Burner Boy. They really have identified him as probably being the biggest threat right now. Uh, I probably could shut off anything that I want to at the moment. I'm going to have Paradox move in first, though. We'll get him sort of into cover. Because uh, we're not going to shut anybody down immediately. 60% is on the vehicles, which is not too terrible. Twin missiles and a ballistic. It's probably a machine gun of some description. He's at full health, though. The Pegasus Scout, uh, also pretty tough. That's going to be unfortunate. How was the Stinger? Stinger was not good, and the Bushwhacker was ooh, really good, actually. Let's focus on that Bushwhacker. We'll see if we can't pull him off the field soon. Uh, the only thing we need to do to kill Bushwhacker is basically attack his side, and he will die. I will, however, rush the Burner Boy on in close. That'll get me, hopefully, good enough accuracy to torch out of the Goblin and burn, baby, burn. And it's gone. <laughs> they don't take as much damage as buildings do, but dear God, they still take a lot of damage. So the Burner Boy is terrifying. Uh, he may become a little bit unsteady with more incoming fire, but I'm going to hope that we can deal with that. I think that's the pay No, that's got to be the Stinger who's moving next. Uh, we'll continue to move the Gladiator up, and we'll just continue to pound the side of that. Oh, even Howl's going to move before it. Oh, buddy, you might be in trouble. Uh, because if I can just continue to just blast away into the side of that mech, it will crack, and it will crack bad. So if I just walked it, I can get to the edge. Eh, I'm only a couple of tiles out, and it's not like we're getting any major range increases on this one. Though, so, I mean, beautiful shots, but we're keeping fire on the bushwhacker. So we missed the one, which is really unfortunate, because I was hoping to get that good penetrating hit on through, and it didn't happen. Can I get a sprint into a side angle? I can, and now sprinting with the gas rifle is not something I want to do ideally, but well, eventually I'll get enough damage on doing fire. There we go. So all we gotta do is blow off his torso, and he's the entire mech explodes, which is super useful to deal with. It's one of the reasons why I love bushwhackers, because the enemy bushwhackers are all XLs, and I never build my bushwhackers with XLs, because they're so incredibly vulnerable. 
I mean, I can't say never, because eventually I will probably end up having to build a bushwhacker with an XL engine. Like, I don't like putting XL engines in anything, but it makes them so easy to go. Oh, apparently his AC-10 jammed. Oh, that's a terrible thing for you. He's not building any heat, and I'm not going to waste the Burner Boy's efforts onto him. I'm probably going to have the Burner Boy continue to go after that, like, scout tank. We'll take care of all of that before we deal with anything else. The Bushwhacker will be reasonably easy to kill, especially since he decided not to move, which, you know, that was really dumb. So once we knock out the side torso, he'll be dead, and it'll be easy. Uh, Jester is feeling confident after he uh, took a little bit of fire. It was feeling a little less than peachy. So we'll come on around, take aim at the Pegasus, and burn you to a crisp. <laughs> I think we... <laughs> did we seriously mark him accidentally? Oh, please tell me that actually happened. <laughs> I don't know, but it looked like we accidentally got the target <laughs> target acquired. <laughs> Alright, the Wolverine is going to march on forward, and the reason why we're continuing to engage on this side is we just need enough damage to break it down, and once that's done... Oh, we get all the goodies inside. Bushwreckers are just... they're goodie pots. They're easy to break into. Or, you know, you can just keep blowing off the lake. And there goes the engine. Yep. That's why. There's four parts to a bushwhacker right there. <laughs> Alright, let's go see if we can't wipe out this little tiny guy without, you know, killing friendly mechs. Uh, 70s are pretty good fire. Oh, just brutal. Although he did, you know, miss with one of his pulse lasers and hit the, hit the burner boy behind him. But other than that, oh, that stair has never felt more pain in his life. Oh, that looked like it was bad. This is why I want a nice star. Because <laughs> they're so cool. They're awesome mechs. They do have XL engines, which makes them really vulnerable, but they're awesome mechs. Uh, yeah, let's just kill this guy. Let's let's finish him off before, you know, too much bad can happen to him. Oh, he's actually reasonably intact still. Let's let's uh, rectify that without hurting our friendlies. Uh, Structure shot. I'll take it. Uh, you better duck, buddy. All right, so we're taking care of that. Uh, now we're just going to start maneuvering, and we'll work on wiping out all of the people who are going to try and stop us. The Burner Boy can just walk in order to shed that stability damage he took from his couple of hits. We have done more damage to that Burner Boy than the enemy has, which is kind of amusing. Uh, keep everybody sprinting so they stay together. That's kind of the key here. Or we can run through the, the heat generating thermo because it'll be fine. And sprint this. It's not very fast. Like, it's kind of fast in like lore, but it's not that fast. Oh good, so we're swinging off to the right. That's fine. So we'll have Paradox sprint his Wolverine on over. And he does not care about heat at all in a Tundra environment. And Ultra AC can't. Ultra AC 5 and a, uh, an a SRM 6 is not going to generate any heat in a Tundra. Even if you add in the the massive heat bonus from the Geothermal. I mean, he's, he's going to be perfectly fine. Can you get beyond that? You can get to it so that... Oh, no, you can actually get a little bit further. So I will actually take advantage of getting a little bit further. Because we're going to be able to brace at the end of the jump. So it'll be great. So he jumps all the way forward. Braces. Built no heat. Did nothing wrong. And we'll just continue to run the Night Star forward. The Night Star can cook. I mean, it does have a couple of medium pulse lasers as well as an ERPPZ. And ERPPZs are hot. So. Alright, incoming support from the enemy. We're going to drop jump on top of their uh, little group of peoples. And hopefully wipe them out before they can do anything. Let's get the Gladiator rushing on forward. Yes, it's a little bit over aggressive. But hey, the Gladiator kind of needs to be close to hurt people. Alright, we were dealing with an Enforcer, which is rough. The Dervish, which I like. A Sentinel, which uh, despite all looks is actually not a crab and a bulldog so not terrible not amazing i'm not gonna fire this the uh, mmls because the mmls one would generate heat and two have a chance of jamming sentinel is a 40 or 45 ton mech so it's a little bit dangerous however i think i'll just shoot at whoever's best and it's yeah it's the enforcer so the enforcer here's some love oh we nailed him on a headshot Beautiful! 27% to hit headshot! Oh, the numbers that came up for that one are beautiful. Alright, so the Sentinel coming on forward. He's losing his spawn protection on that one. And he's not doing anything. Okay, I was expecting a little bit more. Although he may not see us from that direction. Even. Yeah, that, that Enforcer is now incredibly vulnerable. We nailed him in the head. He's got like one health left in that head. It might be worth just focusing on that head to see if we can't get some work done. Uh, sprint on forward. Uh, make sure you can see the Enforcer. We will rough run up under the rough terrain because that's fine. High in oh, it's at 11%, never mind. Uh, we'll shoot the terrorist. Double tap with the ultra auto cannon, not able to connect, unfortunately. But that's fine. Once we get into actual range, we will be able to cause all of the good stuff. The burner boy uh, needs to take some time to get in position. So he'll just rush on over. His range is extraordinarily short, but that's fine. He's a flamer mech. He's a fire starter omni. Which is like the quintessential flamer mech, I suppose, because fire starters are great. And then he's 10 tons heavier with omni technology, which allows us to rapidly remodify him. Uh, can you actually get into a line of sight? 
Oh, you can. One is an abstracted, though, so... 18s and 18s. I'm going to focus on that Enforcer. Mainly because he's already got a headshot on himself, so he's got like one health in that head. I'm not even kidding. Uh, I think you normally have 61 health in your head, because you get 15 structure, 45 armor, or 45 armor, 15 structure. So I can just check on this if I look at Paladin. Uh, you have... Yeah, 45 armor and 16 structure. So he's got one health left in that head. He is vulnerable to the max. Uh, do I want to take out his large laser or his... Or his auto cannon Tim? I think I want to go for the auto cannon Tim. Uh, so we're going to go for his right side. Uh, if he's a I believe the 4R is the standard enforcer. So he's got an auto cannon 10 embedded into this arm. And he's got a large laser. I believe a small laser or something like that. I can't deliberately aim for a headshot unless I have a specific targeting computer, which is a bit unfortunate because that would make life so much easier. Uh, so we just have to go with a normal attack, target you, activate all the weapons. Since we're on the side, there's no point in trying to go for the call shot, especially because it would have reduced accuracy even more. And he's taking a pretty solid hit on that one. Uh, nothing to write home about just yet, but we are eventually going to be writing home about this because it's going to be great. If you took a shot from here, you'd have 34% chance. I think we can get inside a closer bracket if we just continue to move. So we're going to waltz on forward, and that's a 40%. Not as good as I was hoping. But I'm going to fire at him mainly because if I get even one missile that, like, drifts into his head, that's going to be a headshot and an enforcer. And that'll be a dead enforcer. Going to bounce all the way on over here. Probably don't have range on anything just yet. Uh, 12% it's not worth it. A 52% tag. Uh, I'll tag him. Missed 27%. He's going to be fighting next round, though, and he'll probably go after the Bulldog just in order to wipe it out immediately. I could lock down the Sentinel, I think, because I think the Sentinel's an Ultra AC-5 and a large laser. Whole bunch of fire coming out of that Goblin. So, rather significant, actually. Uh, luckily for us, we actually had their Enforcer blocking that damage for us, and so now he's incredibly vulnerable. So, this Bulldog apparently working for our team on this one, uh, which maybe we shouldn't kill him then, since he's clearly on our side. Uh, do I just sprint to get on forward? I think I kind of want to. I mean, I want to get this nice start. And it doesn't brawl. It's not that kind of mech. Uh, it's very much a fire support heavy, or assault, but... Bring the, the range down and eventually we can get even more accuracy. Come on, just one pulse. Apparently none of the pulse lasers did. He did manage to hit him with one of the Gauss rifles, but eh, that's not terrible. So he's not feeling great. He's been blasted by a lot of things. And we're just going to keep the pressure up even more. So 14 is the Sentinel. Then it'll come to 10 for him. And then that'll be the rest of them. And we'll be able to probably wipe them out in the rest. Well, my, maybe not next turn. It's gonna, oh, wow. You have a Gauss rifle? You are a Gauss rifle equipped Sentinel. Okay, so most mechs have a right side bias, and I believe the picture of the Sentinel shows the gun on the right side and a hand on the left. So we're going to go after his left side, see if we can't save that rifle, because I think it's a Gauss rifle. Uh, this, I do believe, is an ultra is a normal auto cannon 10. Dervish coming, hopping. I like Dervishes, they're pretty cool. They're interesting. Oh, wow, pulse laser? Or was this just a normal laser? But you lit up my Nightstar pretty good. So how much damage did we actually do? Oh, no, he split fired too. That's pretty significant right there. Not bad at all. Dervish DV7P. Gonna have to look that one up in the future, just because that seemed pretty cool. We've hopped into range. Oh, he's got four different missile launchers. I'm gonna guess a pair of LRM-10s on each arm. Uh, that would be a lot of weight. Yeah, we nailed the Nightstar with that AC-10, despite all the damage we've been dealing to him. So, Howl's Nightstar is starting to rack up a little bit of damage. Uh, especially on that arm, which I would prefer to keep intact. That's where our Gauss rifles are, so don't break the arms. Uh, I'm actually going to come over here. We're going to wipe this guy out because he actually demonstrated he's pretty dangerous by, you know, almost killing his buddy. Oh, he's got two Ultra AC-2s. Oh, that's what happened. Okay. Please die now. There we go. I love this flamethrower. <laughs> These flamethrowers are amazing. So all the flamers taking care of that. Phase 20, uh, Sentinel, I guess? Yeah, it is a Sentinel. So the Sentinel has demonstrated some sort of powerful ballistic. Might be a Gauss Rifle. Uh, we may end up regretting not torching him. But then again, Gauss Rifles are super chill, so... Yeah, that's definitely Gauss Rifle. Fire to the Gladiator. Missed us again, so that helps out a little bit. And I'm just going to focus on the Enforcer. Although, if we do continue to fight the Enforcer, uh, we may have problems in the near future. Do I have any non-obstructed lines of sight, or are we just sort of dealing with that now? I mean, it could be up here. That could be a 66. Yeah, we'll take it. So give me the Enforcer and just fire. Get one head plank. Just one head plank is all I need. Right, Paladin, are you already, you're already in the side angle? Yeah, just just keep the pressure on. Uh, oh, actually, his other soldiers open up, so yeah, we'll we'll sprint around to his other side. 
if his other shoulders open up, we may as well take advantage of it. So swing on around. Our accuracy is 91%. If I t made the offensive push, goes to 76. Still can't target the head. Um, hmm. No, nah, I think I'll just keep the normal firing just so we can keep the inspiration bonus. I think we should tear off his shoulder. There we go. Oh, yeah. Wow, we had an XL engine. Wait, really? Why would he have an XL engine? That was a normal enforcer. Normal enforcers don't have XL engines. Uh, hi, buddy. Um, you're relatively close to me, and I have, well, a lot of weapons. Oh, <laughs> he took all three of the main guns. So he got nailed on that one. Jeez, that must have felt uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. Both Gauss rifles and the ERPPC. <laughs> Now, I think he took one to each arm of the leg, but jeez, that was all a pain on him. If he loses those arms, that's a considerable amount of firepower that just disappears. And he's gonna hop back. I think that's probably your best choice. Although, that's not gonna shed any stability, man. Firing all the missiles towards the Lorraine. Are those MRMs? Systems holding. Maybe. They might be. Yeah, that might be worth trying to save him. Although, that was like, what, seven? I'm not sure what he's got. I'm gonna keep the fire on to him just to see if we can, you know, figure it out. Uh, I could go after the Sentinel. I kind of want to. We're gonna focus on his left side just to make sure that he can't actually, you know, hurt us too badly. Or rather, that we can save the Gauss rifle. Because most mechs have a right side bias. Uh, meaning that they have their uh, weapons in their right arm. Their big guns in their right arms. So things like uh, Orion's are on the right hip, Atlas's are on the right hip, the Enforcer's are AC-10 in the right shoulder, in the right hand, the Hunchback is on the right shoulder, Wolverine's on the right fist, I mean, most mechs are on the right side bias. When it bucks the trend, things can get interesting, because it's like, wait a second, you're not supposed to have that there. And then you try, you know, wipe them out and you didn't destroy their important weapon. What's up, Bob? Hi, Paradox. Uh, you're just gonna knock this guy in steady for me. And we're gonna knock him over. So a little bit of fire, that'll over overstretch his uh, threshold a bit and that'll knock him down. So on your back, please. Good job there. Whole bunch of initiative lost on that one. Jester can come swinging on over here and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Gonna get up close and personal on the Sentinel and we're gonna say hi. Uh, this is what all my flamers can do and you have a very vulnerable torso. So 68 heat. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That is so beautiful. Uh, let's see if we can't take the shot on his head in 8.3. I think I'll take it. Sure, why not? If I shoot, fire enough times, maybe he'll freak out about it. So his lower arm has been destroyed, and he's clearly not having a good day. If I light him on fire, I might get even more good stuff done. So at, hopefully we can deal with the... Uh, oh, he's got to stand back. Oh, you poor baby. I'm going to knock you right back down, and I think you know it. Although I'm kind of surprised so many pilots have six, uh, six wounds. Like... Seriously, man? You have so much guts? Why? What? Oh, yeah, he does have a whole ton of MRMs. Jeez, we want to kill this guy without, you know, damaging the MRMs. He's going to bounce on forward, which is the smartest thing to do. By bouncing forward, what he's done is he's placed himself underneath my guns. Unfortunately, the ERPPC doesn't have a minimum range, so he kind of lost on that one. Uh, Paladin, what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to see if you can't just finish wiping this guy out so I can go light the other guy on fire. There goes his leg, and there goes the torso, which will probably have destroyed his XL engine, which wiped him out. Lovely. Uh, that'll leave a uh, Jester to sprint on over into this guy's back and light him on all the fire. So here goes all the fire. Oh, that was exceedingly accurate. That sends a heat threshold way on over. I don't actually want to hurt him too bad, uh, because I want to steal his stuff. So what I'd kind of like to do is just give you a little bit of love. And a steel destroyed, that's fine. Uh, we don't need the end of steel chassis. His panic level is critical. I'm gonna kick him with 85 damage. Oh, that'll kill him. That'll kill him something fierce. If I came over to the side, this is the side that actually has a leg. Please don't break the arm. Kick the leg. Please, for the love of goodness, kick the leg so I can steal most of this mech. I wish I could aim melee attacks. No, no, that one's... That went right to the torso. Right. Okay, so we lost a couple of MRMs, but that should be four parts of him as well. I don't think we have a dervish part, but we might. And if we do, that will allow us to actually, you know, get a dervish, which will be great.
Uh, differences are what 55 ton mechs, I believe, and I I like the design. They were I believe the last mech that came out for MechWarrior Online before they kind of said we're not doing any more mech packs. So it's an interesting design. Very it looks very similar to the Enforcer for a lot of reasons. But yeah, lots of good damage dealt to the enemy. Not so much damage dealt to us. I mean we've got these two that are kind of dented the the Burn Boy more than the others. Probably will take them a while actually to fix it. But the Night Star eh, he absorbed a fairly decent amount of damage, which was kind of the plan. So that's now all been taken care of. At all oh, so many. Push record parts. Uh, seriously, where, where did the? Oh, we look at. Oh, it went right on through. Should have fired. Should have shot the gun to knock him over. Panic critical, but no, we didn't. Uh, pair of Ultra AC twos, basic cockpits. How much endos do I have? Because I I have one. Okay, so I have enough. Uh, two fortebrated fusion core, pair of fibrous engine standards, whole bunch of heat sinks, double heat sinks, sensor basics, AC tens, chaff dead fire. Ooh. Dead fire might be worth. How much is? All right, the bottom. How much is that dead fire worth in terms of, uh, and you act to caseless, which gives you a flat 10% jam chance, which is worthless to you then, and a minus 15% weapons damage, which on an AC2, that's already a problem, but you get extra ammo. So I don't think that they're worth it. I think they're pretty terrible. All right, so swarm LRM damage gives you a 25 uh, long range missile damage and deals damage all around, which is interesting. Uh, minus two direct fire accuracy with long range missiles. Swarm missiles are an indirect weapon which spread cluster bombs all over the place, which is pretty interesting. Augmented thunder ammo is pretty strong. I'm not sure what mech I would put it on. Incendiary though. Oh, you got the incendiaries. Uh, we also should probably grab that dead fire. How much? 60 shots. Eh, plus 50% damage because this is about 7 damage that's like a SRM level so if you're using an MML then who cares and we only use MMLs at this point for our long range weapons alright I think I want all the bushwhacker parts give me fun give me two give me three uh, that'll set me up to get a bushwhacker in the very near future not seeing an AC or a uh, gauss rifle so I think we must have blown it off I guess it had a left side weapon instead which is kind of surprising ER large laser came off the enforcer Medium laser, machine guns, MR the MRMs are really tempting. Like, really tempting. But without improved MRM ammo, which I don't know if I have, I don't know if they're worth it, because the, the negative accuracy is pretty damaging. Locked out it. So this will give us the dervish part, which is great. So if we run into another dervish that has an XL engine, we can blow off the arm. This was the cool one. I liked this 7P. I think that's a very interesting dervish design. It's basically an MRM 60, which is really fun. An enforcer part, three part or two parts to the uh, to the sentinel, and then we got the random stinger part, which nobody cares about. Two forty range fusion core was a good pickup. I mean, it's not amazing, but it's solid. And we got the useless ammo that I didn't want. <laughs> so there's that. The problem is that it already has a chance to, chance to jam. Although, if you take care of the recoil, it doesn't. I'm thinking the rotary autocannon. So that's not as bad, but still. I wouldn't want a flat 10% jam chance. Yeah, there's a way to figure out just how much you would get reduced on that jam chance based on gunnery, but that's really high-level tech at that point. So, And the reduction in damage is just not worth it. That That's the thing that kills it for me. Autocannons already struggle really hard to deal enough damage in spite of all their jamming capabilities. And now you want to throw in, oh, and you do less damage. And you have a chance of jamming. That is higher. So it's like, eh, this seems so pointless. So yeah, autocannons already suffer pretty badly. Throwing caseless ammo on there, yeah, you get more shots, congratulations. But your chance of jamming goes up another 10%, which is just not good. It's not worth it. It's not worth it for anybody. All right, so uh, Tortuga grabbing Grant's station from Steiner. The Yarn Folk taking uh, 0.34 from Kirita. And Tortuga also stealing Lunderholm. However, uh, Steiner has taken back Paxson. I think we've seen Paxson fought over a couple of times. It'll be a five-day repair for 23448 Not terrible. I don't think I had another Dervish part. If I did, I'm going to be a little bit irritated at myself that I didn't try and go for the engine destruction sooner. Let's go check out the storage. Uh, my mediums. I have an Enforcer, which is great. Uh, the Sentinel, I can take it or leave it, if I'm completely honest. I mean, it's only a 40-tonner, so we don't really need it. We're not in super pain right now, so we're going to keep it for now. Uh, we got a dervish part, but there, we have no other dervishes. We have four parts to a Nova, uh, as well as three parts to a Griffin. And the Warhound, which I... Yeah, it's a... It's a Stormcrow, which is fun. But we get lots of Stormcrows for some reason. Uh, the first clan mech we ever got in Rotec was a Stormcrow. 
which is kind of boring. And then we've got the Catapult 3, which I need to just run to another Catapult 3 to kill it in order to get all the parts. But Bushwreckers are fairly common, especially once we start moving up through the tiers, and really easy to kill with three to four parts intact. So I anticipate we will be building a Bushwhacker, which I like Bushwhackers, but I have used Bushwhackers as centerpieces of pretty much every single one of my Rogue Tech campaigns ever because of how easy they are to get and how common they are. I like the Bushwhacker again. Just really coming and really easy to get. And then all of our life parts, we're, we're trashing the Stinger. I'm not building a Stinger. I'm sorry, it's just never going to happen. I don't see the point. If I start with a Stinger, we'll work on it. But yeah, that'll be fun. Alrighty, so uh, we are going to check in the faction shop. I was about to end the episode, as you may have guessed. But hey, you know, since we have a little bit of time, we may as well take a peek to see what's currently available. And we have some time before the end of the month. Uh, Panther, quick drop, interesting. However, what are you actually selling in the faction store? Oh, more black wall <laughs> rifles. These things grow on trees, and that's... There, there's 11 of the damn things. Wow. Uh, Ultra AC2s, which would be for clans, which is lighter than your average Ultra Auto Cannon. I don't know if that would... No, I don't think I would do that for an Ultra AC2. For a clan Ultra AC5, that would tempt me. Because that's only, like, 2 tons heavier. It's, like, 7 tons, which is really nice. So, 7 tons for double the damage on this thing, nearly. Uh, it's, it's, the Ultra AC2 just falls behind too easily. Laser weapons, we've got some X-Pulse mediums, which are really cool, but super expensive, and therefore not worth it for me. Uh, missiles, we've got Swarm LRM ammo. I'm really... Oh, and more dead fire. Yeah, grab this. Grab this. I'm gonna spend for four of these days. I want them. I'm also gonna buy... Uh, we'll buy two. Just in case I want to build with them. They are the full ton ones, which give us 240 shots. So that'll be a nice little additional. I love the faction up. More ammo AMS. I... I think we just got an AMS system. Because we have the AMS and not the ammo. And the other one has the ammo, but not the AMS. Standard fusion engine? What? I didn't know you could buy these. Huh. Fusion engine... Oh, for if they've got a primitive engine of some kind, I'm going to buy one of these just to have one. Purely because there are times when we run into a mech which it has problems. Uh, if, if you run into a primitive mech, you can get your hands on it. You don't want to just not use it, so that'll be a way of taking care of it. Yeah, we spent a lot of money that we otherwise didn't have, but we've got 27 days before the end of the month. We should be able to recuperate it without too much trouble. But yeah, please tell me that we just got ourselves an AMS, because that's what I really, really wanted. I need that AMS system. Uh, we also have, uh, we'll, we'll spend a couple of minutes theory crafting. So if you came for the combat, the combat's over. We're going to do a little bit, a little bit of theory crafting. Nothing too special, but some stuff. Yes, yes, we got it, we got it, we got it. Okay, we finally have an advanced AMS and the ammunition to use the darn thing. All right, so let's see what we can do. First things first, we're going to rip everything off of this mech because it's going to get rebuilt. Guardian ECM stays on, of course, because it's great. He's got a gunnery fire support, which gives him plus one gunnery for additional accuracy. Um, range finder for additional gunnery. So he's got plus two gunnery. That's like a plus 5% right there, which is nice. Uh, the sensor tracker for long range combat. So it's, it's rigged for long range combat, which is cool. It's got 16 tons. The engine core is intact. But the engine, I'm not going to put an XL into it, but I do have an endo steel, and I don't have ferro, I don't think. Yeah, we don't got ferro. We do have an XL gyro, which we can throw in here if we want. Should we need the tonnage? We've got it. Uh, it's 1.65 tons, which is really fun. In fact, I don't even know if I'm going to need the endo. So, it's got three ballistic, two missile launchers. We recently came into managing to pick up a pair of really cool missile launchers. <laughs> they weigh six tons. They have 20 tubes. Now, to note, this is one ton worse of a Clan LRM-20. A Clan LRM-20 weighs five tons and has no minimum range. But this is about as close as you get in the inner sphere, and we can stack that so good. I might do this. I don't know. We're thinking about it. <laughs> uh, to build on top of that, what we will then want is... The AMS system, of course, because I've wanted one of these things for so gosh darn long. Don't know which side I'll put it on. We'll figure that out later. In fact, I'm just going to, just for the purposes of figuring out that we're going to keep it on here. So ammo AMS, how much, how much, how many shots does this use? Uh, 200 shots. The AMS fires 20 shots. So that is 10 shots. I'll give you 20 shots. Well, 20 rounds of shooting. So that'll be helpful. Or at least 20, 20 shots, I guess? I'm not quite sure if I need two tons of this. Uh, oh, overloaded fires 20. Normal fires 30? Wait, what? 
AMS fires 30 shots, generates six heats, overloaded AMS fires multiple times per round. So if we set it to overload, it fires 20 shots, but can shoot many times. Ah, uh, whatever. So it'll, we'll give it 20 intercept chances on missile salvos. That should help out a little bit. So this drastically has increased, you know, the missile firepower. Uh, of course, we're going to want to listen kills in this thing. Uh, we're also going to want incendiaries out the wazoo because this thing's gonna need them. Although this this is turning into a pure missile boat. What sort of rifles do I got? Uh, not an ammo. So that is a thought, but this might be a little bit light to do that. Still kind of want to keep this just just for the fun. Uh, we've got a rotary AC-5 clan, which we could throw in. Now, the rotary auto cannons have proven to be pretty gosh darn interesting. Uh, fairly solid and reliable, actually. Uh, the one battle that we used it, the other one it didn't do so great. But this is 13 tons, which is pretty gosh darn heavy. I use up pretty much all our tonnage doing that. Uh, so we'll need to use the additional ton for other things. So if we do that, it would just be the rotary 5. However, there's a ghost rifle that's really, really big and really, really powerful. Super short range, though. But if we were to do something like that, uh, we could also throw in a Blackwell Gauss Rifle. That'll be 15 tons. Again, we're out of tonnage on that one. We have a very limited amount of space in this, or hard points in this mech, and that's kind of the thing that sort of sets us back. So I don't think I would want to use machine guns. I don't think I have enough lasers to make this thing work. Uh, if we did use a Gauss Rifle, though, I do have large lasers. I have multiple. Oh, I've only got one, one energy hard point anyway. So... Hmm, maybe not. This one's broken, we don't want it. Flamers, which we used most of ours. Oh, the twin MMLs really kind of speaks to me. This would be so much fun. Although, if we run into AMS, it shuts this mech down entirely. We've already got two mechs that are shut down entirely by AMS. And another one which is weakened by it. I'm going to have to put in some real interesting thought on this one. Because now that the Shadowhawk's broken, I can do whatever I want to it. And we could just turn around and basically rebuild to what it was. But I kind of don't want to do that, because we've already done that. So I'm thinking about throwing a Gauss Rifle into it. Um, if we go Gauss Rifle, and we would need the Clan Gauss Rifle to really make it work. And I would prefer to use my Gauss Targeting Computer on something that would be able to make the most of it i.e. it would have a Gauss Rifle attachment in the hand where it can get the innate accuracy bonus for being in your arm. But yeah, we're going to have to think a long and hard amount on that one. But anyway, I have been Tarek. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to see a notification every time I post one of these videos, press that little bell icon, leave a comment, hey, and maybe join us for our streams. There's going to be one on Wednesday, and there's also one on Saturday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time. We play through Rogue Tech, another campaign of ours called Apollo's Vipers, which is a clan start. So if you want to see a very different beginning, and another group which is sucking down a way ton more cash uh go check them out and you will have a lot of fun you can also find the vods over on the rest of the channel go look for the clan evasion playlist i think you'll enjoy it and if you enjoy, do enjoy it definitely try and catch us for the streams we would love to have you and i will see you all in the next episode